people deluded i'm back again thank you very much for tuning in and them things there now obviously arsenal fans you've seen a lot of development congratulations to our under 18s um, manager ken who's got the job permanently we've seen some ingoings and outgoings and You've obviously all seen that all we're waiting is official confirmation in regards to Edu becoming and re or returning as a technical director at this club. And it really got me thinking, obviously, we know we need a rebuild. We know this is a summer of high demand and high energy in that. On one hand, I don't necessarily agree, regardless of if I think the players are good enough or not, which you lot know my opinions. I don't necessarily agree with making mass wholesale changes and leaving the squad thin. Because obviously in an ideal world, we would love to get every player, probably double digits, out of the door, bringing double digits in, hopefully, and give them time to gel on things. But the club ain't going to do that, people. So it's going to... We have to just hope that we get, I'd say, 60 to 70% of the deadwood off in it, people, in my opinion, anyways. It's tricky for several reasons. It's one that I believe needs high high energy, and I know Une Emre is not that old. He's in his 40s. Um, Francis, who I'm going to speak about, is in his 40s. Edu's in his 40s. Sanye's got um, age on his side and things like that, because it is going to be a high-demanding role. Um it got me thinking in regards to Fran um, allegedly that Francis Kaji Kaigio, I cannot say his name, let's just keep calling him Francis. Um, we know he's in he's in charge of internal recruitment in no, international recruitment at the club, but he possibly looks to get a promotion to head of scouting, allegedly, or if it's not that role word for word, the same role that Miss Lintat had. And it really does make you think what's going to happen in regards to our transfer fees and I mean not transfer fees, how we manoeuvre in the transfer market because Obviously, Francis is French. Um, not French. Francis is Spanish. We all know that allegedly scouted Messi, Cesc Fabregas, Lauren, many other players, um, and things like that. Uno Emre is Spanish, so where we obviously football, your nationality doesn't matter if we can scout good players from anywhere. We will, but I would have thought at some point there would have been a, a sort of Spanish recruitment drive or more players, if not necessarily Spanish playing in La Liga or them sort of things there. Obviously, if you're if you're head of international scouting, you've got to be everywhere. And Martinelli, it was allegedly his signing. Again, i just a football fan, but allegedly he did the groundwork for him and scouted him. Now, Martinelli, who's, again, ironically, just missed an official confirmation himself, um, he's South American. So did Edu and, and Francis already um, collaborate with each other to bring that signing in? Did um, Edu, because they were, forgive me if I'm wrong, they would actually be previous teammates, you know. No, I'm wrong about that. They won't be three previous teammates, but they've, but they've previously both played for the squad. Would he have been a teammate? I'm not too sure when Francis stopped playing football. But either way, could they have, could he have helped a mate out or a former Arsenal member out in that he, he, he notified um, the club or Francis or whoever to, to Martinelli sign and he's playing in the second division in Otano and things like that. And did Francis, after being alerted by Edu, do the groundwork and get it done? Or was it Ed, just an Edu signing? I guess we'll never know, but it does make you think, are we going to do the South American thing? Because we haven't really had much success there of recent years. Probably the mo the best South American player, obviously Torreira now, but if we're specific to Brazil, probably Gabriel before that... Um, um, obviously you got Gab you got um, Gilberto Silva, and we've obviously we've, we've signed Wellington Silva, uh, Pedro Befelo. There's been Brazilian talents and South American talents, mainly the ones they failed because they can't get um, work permits. But it hasn't happened here. So are we going to be better at scouting South American talents? Obviously, Torreira is different, but Torreira is South American. We've signed Martinelli, who's South American. Can we go out there and find some deals in South America for emerging players, similar to what you see with Shakhtar, the Knicks, and them sort of clubs there that take players in before they go on to do bigger and better things? Forgive me. Um, are we going to do that? Obviously, we'd have to get around work permits and several tricky things. So I'm keen to see how we structure. Do we go after South American emerging or established targets? Um, do we um, go for La Liga targets and, and things like that? Um, what else was I going to say? Um, um, obviously, in previous years, Arsenal have worked with um, Rignola, Rignola, what Mino Rinola. I don't know what happened there, people. Former, well... He is a current football football agent. For, I think he does manage Daniel Marlin and he's currently on the books. He's got Mkhitaryan. Um, so, yeah, and we all know Mkhitaryan got a big payday at this club. Um, apparently, is it Kaya Jarufkan? I cannot say these names, but um, the guy who actually used to own a bit of Tevez, apparently he brokered the deal for Edu to come to Arsenal and, and stuff like that. So are we working with these super agents now, to which if we are, that opens up a new can of worm for certain different targets that... 
we used to be linked with and then you could see that there's no point even speculating because Arsenal are not going to work with certain agents. So I'm keen to see, man. I'm keen to see if he does step into Miss Lintat's role as head of scouting. Um, I'm keen to see if we do go for South American talents, La Liga-based talents. Even we can't rule out domestic-based talents, to be fair with you people, because some people do say we need some homegrown talent and, thing, and things like that. Personally, I hope we can go South America and... And find a find a centre back like Gordin, like Gordin or or Jimenez, someone with a bit of aggression and someone that can actually defend at this club. Um, it'll, I'm interested to see the remit, man. Will he be working directly with first team and won't he? Because obviously, they all have to collaborate together. But if Francis is um. Will Francis um, primarily be with the youth still or will he help with the first team? Because Martinelli, you'd think initially 23s, but going to step up. Um, Edu's going to be the sporting director, so you can kind of see how he's going to be directly in charge of liaising with Una Emre and everyone else for targets. But how does Francis come into play? We've been linked with a couple of South, young South American talents um, recently as well off the back of this. So I'm keen to see what happens, man. I'm keen to see... Will we start going for South American talents? Will we start working with players that are clients or super agents? Because this is kind of where Arsenal need to play catch up to a degree. Um, I was also going to say, so that's that done. I was also going to say, I came across an article in which Unem Ray is allegedly planning to build his side around Leno, Hector Bellerin, Rob Holding, Gwendozi, Torreira, Lacazette and Xhaka. Now... Let's not. Let's just assume that doesn't mean starting week in week out. I just see them lot as the pillars. And to be fair, Guendouzi can eventually develop into a regular first teamer if he irons his game out. And I've been impressed with him. Torreira is Torreira. Bellerin's improved prior to his injury. Sadly, Holding finally got into the team and looked like he was doing his thing before his season ended at Old Trafford. Lacazette's Lacazette. I think you can build a team around Lacazette. I didn't see Aubameyang's name. I'm gonna assume Aubameyang was there because, as much as I believe Lacazette is a baller and and makes the difference and relishes responsibility and big games time after time coming through for us. He's got 13 league goals, forgive me if I'm wrong, and he's yet to score 20 league goals, regardless of if we say he was substituted, he never started, and this and that. He hasn't got 20 league goals. Aubameyang has. Aubameyang has been on the flanks. Aubameyang has been up top. Aubameyang has been on the bench. He's managed. You can say what you want about missing chances and stuff, but Aubameyang has 20 league goals. If you want to win league titles or whatnot or do anything, you need a striker with that. So I'm going to assume Aubameyang's name is supposed to be there or this article is nonsense. And I agree with all the names, but I can't lie. I think Xhaka's had a decent season. He's fallen off with the team towards the end and there has been moments where he's not been perfect this season, but I definitely feel he's come a long way this season. Um, I've got time for Xhaka in the sense that I believe he could be in the squad. I don't understand why Uno Emre and Arsene Wenger play him week in, week out, but they have more football knowledge than I'll ever have. If he's giving something to them, um, then I can't say anything. There's a reason he's starting game in, game out. I don't think Xhaka is someone you build a team around. I think Xhaka, he's got a good mentality. He's, he relishes responsibility. I just feel he hasn't got the temperament to build a team around because you see him with the penalty and, and, and several things. I like him, but I think he's a squad player. He's, you can use him and get away with him, but he let you down at times. So I don't necessarily agree with the Xhaka one. And I feel if you're trying to build your team around Xhaka, you're in, you're in trouble. We can't be in trouble because that's not someone you build a team around, to be fair with you. Um... I believe in the rest, and to be fair with you, they would be the pillars, to be fair. They would be the guys I'd be building my team around. I'd be saying myself off the top of my head, Hector Bellerin, like in terms of structuring and who would be in my plans for this season and next season and season beyond, you'd say the Hector Bellerins, the Torreras, the Grandolzis, the Holdings, Lacazette and Aubameyang, at least while they're in their peak years, we need to make use of that. Obviously, you've got the Reese Nelsons, you've got Emil, Amici and Saka. Within the next 18 months, we've got to look at possibly giving some some game time or or set, may possibly sending one on loan to play football because I think they're being wasted to a degree in the 23s. Um, so they would probably be the team. Mavropanos eventually. We don't know Mavropanos' level. I think he's got a lot of potential. And when I have seen at a point this season when he was getting game time for the 23s, I think he's a good defender. But we don't know his level until he's given a chance to play. I think he's got a decent potential. I don't care for saying if a man can be world class and all these things. I think Mavropanos can develop into a consistent and competent defender for us. And that's actually all I want. I, I don't really care if my, if my centre-half... Obviously, with the modern game, you want your centre-half to be able to ping passes and do the Van Dyke stuff. But if Van Dyke couldn't defend, first and foremost, would anyone care that he's a good... He can do things in the air. He's, he, can, he can bring the ball out and do these things. He can do the basics. Ramos as well, Varane as well, any top defender. Basics first, 
PK too. I know he, obviously they lost to Liverpool yesterday, 4-0, so it's not the best of examples, but the basics first, competency, consistency, competency in the role of their defender, can they defend, consistency, are they defending to a great standard all the time, that's what you need, that's far better than a defender that, for me, that can bring the ball out 50 yards and ping a pass, but he's not switched on tactically when, when the team's on the break, and he's stuck stuck standing still with his hand up, because they are defenders that have done that at this club in a cup final, 1v1 with Sergio Aguero, rather than tracking back, you're stand, standing with your hand up, playing, trying to play off sides. I'd prefer someone that's a bit more street smart and that realised, OK, Sergio Aguero is, is quicker than me and he, he knows the movement thing. Let me drop off a couple of yards and forget trying to play off sides. You can't rely on refs in, the, in England to, to do their job correctly. Um, so that's all I wanted to say, man. I don't agree with necessarily building the team around Xhaka, but it is what it is if that's what he wants to do. Um, Offered my, my thoughts on Francis. So I'm going to keep it moving. People, DG.